day, students. My name is Cornelius. I am the marketing teacher in St. Mary Dedication British International High School here in Benin City. Today, I'll be taking you on the topic in marketing, international marketing. The objective of this class is that at the end of the class, students should be able to explain the meaning of international marketing. And again, they should be able to explain the activities relating to international marketing. And number three, the students should be able to explain the importance of international marketing. Now, let's go straight to the topic under discussion. What is international marketing? International marketing relates to all activities engaged in by a business owner that will result to the sales and distribution of products and services across international borders. In essence, what we are talking about is this. That is that any activities engaged in by a business owner, by an entrepreneur, that will result to the sales and distribution of products across international borders is what we call international marketing. Now, international marketing has to do with importation and exportation. What is exportation? When you are moving products across borders to other countries, you are exporting the products. Importation is when you are moving products from other countries to your own domestic country. That's what we call importation. Now, what are some of the activities that a business owner will engage in that has to do with international marketing? Some of these activities are what is listed on the board that you can see. Number one, you have to find what you can produce locally in your own domestic country that they cannot produce abroad. That is, when you are able to carry out these findings, you are trying to create a need by other countries which they cannot produce. Now, what you do is that you produce these commodities locally and sell to them abroad so that you can be able to earn a, get a foreign earnings. Then number two, you are also finding a market for the product. When you are making production locally, you must find a, a market for the product abroad. Who are those that will buy the product you are producing? Are they the poor or the rich? Then you must find a market for the product you are producing so that you can be able to produce those items and the buyers are readily available that will buy them from you abroad. Then number three, you are finding what class of prospective buyers will demand for the product. The product you are producing locally, what are the class of buyers abroad that will buy them? Is it the poor? Is it the rich? Is it uh, industries? Is it companies? What you are producing, are there raw materials that will, that will aid production of goods or services in other countries? You are finding out the class of prospective buyers that will demand your product. Then number four, does the prospective buyer have the purchasing power? Do they have the money to pay? When you produce these items, the buyers that you are prospecting that you will settle in abroad, can they pay? You know that the reason why you are making, you are doing business is to make profit. If you don't have the buyer, you will not earn money. And if you don't earn money, you cannot make profit. Then number five, how is the government regulation like? In the countries where you are selling the products, how is the government regulation like? Will the government impose high tariff on the product you are selling to them. Now, when you put all this into consideration, now you will not be able to decide whether to go ahead with the production of those commodities or not. Then number six, how can I overcome the barriers such as language, currency, and weather? These are some of the barriers in international marketing. You should note one thing, that when you are selling product to other countries, they are speaking a language different from the one you understand. Then how can you overcome this language barrier? Do you need to go and learn their language? Then secondly, the currency they are paying to you is different from your own local domestic currency. What do you do? Will you, not, you, will you go and exchange your domestic currency to the currency they use in the country where you are selling? And again, how can you overcome the weather barrier? 
where you are selling to, the country you are selling to, their weather is different from the one you have in your own domestic country. How will you be able to overcome this barrier? Then number seven, what is my cost of the product and how much can I sell? How much is the cost of the product I want to sell to other countries? Then how much am I going to sell it? You should know one thing, that the reason why you are into business is to make profit. And if you are selling to other countries, you won't be able to sell above your cost price. If you are selling above your cost price, you will make a profit. But when you sell below your cost price, you will end up making a loss. And of course, you know that no businessman is ready to make a loss. So our topic to discussion, we are looking at importance of international marketing. What are some of the importance of international marketing? Number one, it grows your business by gaining international recognition and more profit. It makes your business to gain international recognition because you are selling to other countries and also make you to make more profit. And number two, you can access raw materials from other countries. When you are into production of goods and services, you see that the raw materials you are using may not be available domestically. What you do, you go to other countries to buy those raw materials and make them to produce your domestic goods. And number three, it promotes production of high quality commodities. You are more interested in producing high quality commodities so that those you are selling to abroad can buy from you and just also make you to gain international recognition. And number four, you can assess foreign earnings. The money they are using to pay for your product because you are selling them abroad is different from your local currency. Therefore, it makes use to earn a foreign currency. Let's look at international trade. International trade. International trade is also related to international marketing as we have discussed before. This is the trade and exchange of goods and services across different national boundaries. It is the actual selling of the commodities abroad. It has to do with importation and exportation. Importation is when you are moving product from other countries to your own domestic countries. While exportation is when you are selling from your country to other countries abroad. Let's look at balance of trade. Balance of trade is the relationship between import and export. Relationship between what you are moving from other countries to your country and what you are selling from your country to other countries. And balance of trade can be favorable or unfavorable. Now let's look at the meaning of favorable balance of trade. It is when a country's receipt from export exceed payment for import. That is, the money you are paying for the product you are importing to your country is more than what you are paying for the, for the, for the, for the, for the product you are importing. What I'm saying in essence is this. When you are importing products into your country, you are making payment. And when you are exporting, that is what I'm to other countries, you are receiving money. Now, when the money that you are receiving from other countries is more than what you are paying, you can say that the balance of trade is there favorable. Now, let's look at unfavorable balance of trade. When a country's payment for import exceeds received received from a export. Now, what I'm saying is this. When you are importing commodities, as I said before, you are paying money to other countries. And when you are exporting, you are receiving the money. It's unfavorable when the money you are receiving is less than what they are paying to you. You can say that the balance of trade is uh, unfavorable. Now let's look at balance of payment. Balance of payment. Balance of payment is a statement showing payment made by a country to other countries and received from them. This one is an annual statement stating what you are receiving from other countries and what you are paying to other countries. Now, balance of payment can be surplus or deficit. 
balance of, of balance of payment surplus. When it is when received from other countries exceed payment made to them. That is the money you are receiving from other countries. If it is more than what you are paid to them, you can say that balance of payment is a surplus. Now let's look at balance of payment deficit. This is when payment made to other countries exceed receipt from them. In this case, money you are paying to other countries, if it is more than the money you are receiving from them, there is a deficit. That is, your payment to other countries is more than what you are receiving. Now let's look at the reasons for international trade. Number one, product life cycle effect. What I'm saying here is this. There are some commodities or products you produce and use locally or domestically. When the life cycle has expired, that is, your country is no longer, no longer needing. Those products you think have expired and they are no longer useful here, it may be useful in other countries. For example, most of the Tokumbo cars we use here in Nigeria, they are no longer useful in abroad. So that's what we mean by product life cycle. We are talking about competition. It also encourages competition among the countries. And number three, domestic no availability. Most of the product that you use here in Nigeria or you use in your domestic country may not be available domestically. When those products are not there, what do you do? You go to other countries to go and buy them so that you can use them in your own country. We also look at the principles of comparative advantage. What does those principles state? It states that a country should concentrate in the production of that commodity in which they are skillful. They can produce better. What do they do? Because they can produce that one better and they are skillful in producing it, the principle says that they should concentrate in the production of that very one. Whereas the one they are not skillful, they can go to other countries and buy them. And number five, fall in domestic demand. When your product is no longer demanded or they are no longer buying them domestically, what do you do? You go to other countries to go and look for or seek for the market so that your products can be sold. And finally, we are look at government policy and the regulation. Government may decide to encourage the importation or exportation of some certain commodities. When government encourages that, what you do, the businessmen will be very, very interested in going to international marketing. And government regulation also include the use of a tariff. Government may decide to say, okay, I want to protect my domestic industry. What do they do? They increase the tariff imposed on imported commodities. When the, there is an increase in, in tariff of imported commodities, most of our import businessmen that go to our to go and buy commodities, they will be discouraged. When they are discouraged, you see that there will be more uh, uh, demand for our own local goods than that of imported commodities.